Well, I've got one mistake of my presentation. Again, I'm Doug Wiggins. I'm the Department of Labor and Industry. And uh, on the new lead issue, uh, OSHA hasn't changed their lead rule. It's part of 1926-62 or 1910.5. If you're disturbing lead, you have to protect the employee. That hasn't changed with all these new regulations. Uh, OSHA still regulates lead. Yes, sir. As a building official, we don't issue permits for painting. So, that's correct. who is going to enforce that? that? That's a good question. That's a real good question. Uh, uh, I do have a building commissioner in, in Roma, where I'm from, who is asking the contractors when they come in and they're uh, going to do some type of renovation. He's looking to see if they've got that uh, uh, RRP uh, certification. That's just him. I don't know if that's going to catch on. If EPA wants to come into town and they're not looking at HUD or they're not looking at uh, any kind of large projects, the only source of information would be for the building officials because they know where all of the renovation projects are going on. And not strictly, if you, all you're doing is painting, right. then there would be no information there. Uh, I don't know how they plan to do that. Uh, and right now, as far as the Department of Labor, we're not regulated. We regulate regular lead, but not on this particular situation. Any other questions? Okay. That's me. Asbestos. And Bill mentioned in her presentation, what is asbestos? There's three main types. It's a facilite, anosite, My brain is done for it, I apologize. Uh, and chrysopite. Uh, it's a natural occurring mineral, comes right out of the ground. And uh, this is a uh, natural occurring asbestos. I don't know if you can see that very well. I know on the, uh, the handout it's kind of dark. Uh, this was taken in Lynchburg, Virginia. It's a site that I came up on where a contractor was building a, a furniture store. They got into the natural occurring asbestos. This was a big vein of it up in uh, Fairfax. But this is a vein that also runs through Lynchburg. And uh, contractor, it, as far as OSHA is concerned, what we're looking at is protecting the employee. Natural occurring asbestos, we can't do anything about it at all. But as long as we're protecting the employees in the process, uh, you should be good to go. And that's what they did in this, this issue. You can see where they were digging in the side of the rock. And all that white material that you see there, that's uh, a ten of lights, 90%. And that's, there's, there's six main asbestos uh, uh, names uh, of the asbestos material, and ten light is one of the ones that's kind of rare. You run across it every now and then, trim light, and trim light, uh, uh, and uh, the blue, the other one, I'm sorry. And this is about, that's uh, another piece of asbestos that's natural occurring. It is about the size of a football, which I'd say just that I didn't. Uh, but it does come naturally out of the ground. Uh, the best source of information as far as contractors, uh, local building officials, subcontractors, is to check your MSDS sheet. If you're looking to see if any of the material that you're putting back into a building or uh, when you're renovating, does it contain asbestos? And they do say, on MSDS sheets, it's uh, mineral fibers. Well, asbestos is a mineral fiber. So if you're not sure what you're putting back into your building as far as renovations are concerned, the best thing to do is sample that material. Federal state statutes and regulations apply in renovation demolition of a facility involving asbestos containing material. Uh, that's a national emission standard for hazardous air pollution. That's NESHA, that's the EPA federal regulation. And uh, in the occupational safety and health uh, under the dental industry and under the construction industry. And that's all three of those I regulate in my part of the, uh, the state, as does uh, George Lovelace in the Richmond area and Kara Huffman in the Norfolk area. As far as uh, a project being exempt from the ESHAP, you could be exempt from the, the numbers, uh, the, the 261, 60, as far as the ESHAP is concerned but you still could fall under OSHA. And that's part of this whole situation that we're talking about. We're wanting you to be aware of it, uh, and, and we'll get to it in just a minute, about the Code of Virginia and the differences between the Code of Virginia, which the, uh, uh, the, the building officials regulate 
and then the difference, a little bit of difference between that and what, what's regulated by the federal folks and by OSHA. In 1971, following the realization that uh, the increasing widespread use of asbestos in manufacturing products have resulted in a measurable increase of asbestos fibers in the air. The EPA uh, listed asbestos as a hazard air pollution. In 1973, EPA promulgated the National Emission Standard for Hazardous Air Pollutants for asbestos, and on November 20, 1990, EPA published a substantial revisions to the Nation Act, which remain in effect today. Asbestos specified work practice to be followed during demolition and renovation on all structures, installations, buildings, excluding residential buildings with four or fewer welding units. And with that being said, that's what EPA regulates as far as that part, four fuel dwellings. And it's going to be in uh, the state of Virginia also. But that all, doesn't always stand true. So as we go along, you might find there's some differences. In addition to, excuse me, in addition to this regulation requires the owner of a building or a contractor to notify uh, state and local agencies or the EPA regional office before all demolitions or before renovations of a building that can that contain a certain threshold of asbestos. And there we're looking at, you'll see the numbers in just a minute, the 260, 160, 35. Uh, EPA has delegated uh, the authorities to the Virginia Department of Labor and Industry to enforce an ESHAP in Virginia. Questions you should ask yourself, contractors, not, do we have any contractors in here today? I know Wake is back there. They're making contractor. You and Jones contractor? No. Jones. Jones. Okay. Subcontractor Jones. Jones contractor. A lot of this plays out when you get into a building you're renovating. Um, your vacant contractors such as Waco, in most cases you'll hire somebody like that to remove the asbestos prior to. Uh, so that, but there's questions you need to ask yourself. Before you can do any renovation on a building built before 1985 under the Code of Virginia, you have to do an asbestos inspection. Building officials, and there's quite a few of them in here, will not let you have a permit to do that if the building was built before 1985. Keep that in mind, we'll go a couple slides forward. Uh, does the project meet the definition of a facility and does the amount of regulated asbestos containing material meet or exceed the threshold? And that's the EPA's threshold. Facilities are defined as all public, commercial, industrial, or institutional structures, ships, bridges, active or inactive waste disposal sites. Residential buildings with more than four units. Uh, single family homes to be burned for any purpose. One, two, or more single family homes on single site to be demolished or renovated for commercial purposes. Single family dwelling can fall under OSHA and NISHA if it's going to be used for commercial purposes. You're tearing down, excuse me, you're tearing down a little old house. Uh, and if you're going to put Walmart up, you're going to put a CVS up here on the corner, there's a new CVS in there. Uh, if there's a single family home there, an asbestos inspection is required on that, that building prior to demolition. And a notification to the state and to the EPA for that demolition for that single family home. So you have to know what the property is going to be used for so that you're getting the right information from the contractor before you get a, issue a permit. Now, again, you're looking at that before 1985 days. Uh, applies jointly to the owner and the operator. So if I come on a job site, the care come on a job site, and we got an owner of a property, and we got a contractor and a subcontractor, we can cite everybody there for this situation if they're not going in the right direction as far as the, uh, uh, the regulations require. Schools are subject to the EPA for private under a here. And uh, I'm sure that everybody uh, in, in building this is familiar with the parents. Everybody okay? All right. Please stop that. Residential structures. <laughs> owners of a home uh, that renovates his or home, uh, the owner of a home that renovates his or, his or her home house or demolishes it to construct another house would not be underneath that. I'll get it out there. Uh, you get, to, in a lot of cases, and I do get a lot of phone calls, where, you know, you got a 60, 70 year old woman calling you on the phone saying, you know, I want to take off my asbestos site and I live in this house. She can do that. I don't know if she's physically able, but she can take that asbestos off the house and uh, then have somebody come in and tear the house out if she desires to. Uh, 
normally we recommend them not to do that. You know, a lady can have a heart attack or whatever. Or what she's going to do when she takes off a few sheets of that, she's going to find this is very difficult work, and she's going to hire a contractor. And a contractor comes in to remove that. If he doesn't have training, ask us his wife. If he doesn't have that specialty on his license, then he's in violation of the Virginia Ocean regulations. Four of you are dwellings being renovated and uh, demolished that are owned by the same owner. Uh, you get uh, a gentleman that lives in a home and he has a piece of property around the city. And uh, he wants to go into that leased property and remove asbestos. In his own home, he can do that. In leased property, he cannot do that. He cannot go in and remove asbestos. He's not an asbestos company. He doesn't have the training to do that. So if he's got his own house and he wants to remove it, that's fine. If he's got numerous leased properties around town that he wants to go in and do asbestos removal, then he'd be in violation. If residential structures that are demolished or renovated as part of a commercial public uh, project are subject to each uh, highway project, I know you, you, you know, your building official are probably familiar with that. VDOT comes in, uh, they're going to take a line of houses out where they're going to widen the road. Uh, VDOT will file the notifications, they'll have a contractor come in and remove the asbestos <coughs> prior to, and then they'll demolish the, the buildings. And that's as it should be done. Uh, Houses in, uh, in urban renewal projects need not be continuous to each or other, to each other for subject to new shop. And what that's saying is uh, you've got uh, old homes in your uh, in your territory that you want to get rid of. Uh, they're blight, they're in poor condition, the owners have moved out of state, the uh, local governments have taken control of those particular homes. You hire a contractor to come in and <coughs> demolish that. And you've got five or six to demolish in the process. Asbestos inspection would be required. You would fall under the new job. And uh, demolition notification for those buildings would be required under new job. If, uh, if you don't do that and George, myself, or Tara happen to be passing by and you're doing a demolition, demolition is an emphasis program we can stop and open up an inspection. If we find that there's asbestos at the site, you can be cited under Bosch and the owner or the person who's taking control of that particular uh, facility could also be cited for the same issues that you're citing the contractor for. Uh, in, in case of highway expansion, one entity, the state highway department or, and or a demolition contractor owns or controls those residential structures to be demolished. That's basically what I'm, what I'm talking about as we go. These residential structures are subject to the asbestos niche act regulations. If one residential structure is the only structure being demolished during the project, the one residential structure is not subject to the niche act. However, it could be subject to uh, Virginia OSHA because there may be asbestos in that facility. We recommend doing asbestos on inspections on all buildings. It does the fact, again, if we ride by and you're doing a demolition of a single family dwelling and we find asbestos there, we can cite you under both. Here's the, the threshold amounts, and these are EPA threshold amounts. 260 uh, on pipes, uh, 160 square feet on any other facilities uh, components such as a floor, uh, or ACM that's already been removed and not already measured 35 feet. These are, these are EPA uh, numbers. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, if you have 10 linear or 10 square feet, you have to do a notification to the Commonwealth to the grand block. Any material greater than 1% asbestos is considered asbestos containing material. Thank you. NESHAP applies, applies to regulated asbestos containing materials. That's the crack, friable asbestos, category 1 non friable, uh, category 1 non friable ACM, category 2 non friable. Uh, a lot of times you, you'll see these old houses uh, that have the asbestos siding on the old transite siding on the World War II or uh, post-World War II houses. Uh, you take a wrecking ball to that house and you leave the siding on that. And in most cases, you're renting that non friable material regulated or friable. And uh, that material would have to be removed prior to the demolition. Prior 
Travel asbestos means any material greater than 1% that can be crushed by hand cracker. Uh, and that's analyzed by DLM, um, over like a prostitute. Uh, that when dry can, can be crumbled or pulverized or reduced to powder by hand cracker. If asbestos is less than 10%, uh, determined by the method other than point counting by over life. So a lot of contractors in a lot of cases, when they have 10%, they know they're going to have to hire a base contractor, the Waco uh, person, to come in and do this removal. So they send the materials back to the lab, and they get them to point count. If they can point count it under 1%, then the, uh, the regulations for a full abatement contractor are not required at that point. You could use someone with at least uh, eight hours of hands-on training through OSHA. We don't recommend it, but this is a um, a preferred method by some contractors, some environmental companies. Point count to get it under one percent. Still has to be secure. It's just less than one percent at that point. Uh, walk up on that situation of the pipe overhead that had fell on the, uh, the lower floor as I came up on the inside of the uh, of the building that I was going to inspect. Uh, damaged pipes. Uh, as you can see, they're in pretty poor shape. Uh, you wouldn't want to have a, a building in your in general industry with the materials in such shape like this. If for some reason, uh, OSHA does come in to do an inspection. Uh, this is the side of the uh, Air cell. Anybody uh, familiar with that stuff at all? I know that the corrugated looking materials and air cell materials run anywhere from 10 to 10 to 50 percent. Depends on when uh, this was in a nursing home. I had the access to the roof, and that's private. That's that 40 percent asbestos fell all over the, the floor right here at the access ladder. And if you were going to access the roof, you had a roofing contractor here who's going to go in there. That means it's going to contaminate itself to go up and uh, to estimate that roof. So that material has to be cleaned up. You can't leave it in a condition like this. Uh, damaged pipes. When the material is damaged, it falls on the floor, around the pipes. It's the obligation of the owner of the building or a contractor to come in and make sure this is clean and in good shape. You don't always have to remove asbestos. If the asbestos is not in poor shape or if it's in poor shape like this, you can, uh, you can wrap it, you can encapsulate it, you can uh, enclose it to keep it in place. Asbestos is a really good material. It's hard to beat what they're putting on nowadays. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've worked with a lot of the power plants in the past. And uh, they removed the asbestos and the material that they put on back 15 years ago. They're removing now with what this uh, is deteriorating from dust and heat. Okay. Uh, category 195 means any asbestos contained material, packages, gaskets, floor uh, covers, asphalt roofing products containing more than 1% asbestos. This is an EPA regulation. And category 2 means any materials excluding category 1 containing more than 1%. Uh, 1%. Um, and that's why there's an overlapping process. Some non tribal materials may remain non tribal throughout demolition, demolition and renovation. Uh, a lot of contractors want to leave uh, floor high materials in a building while they're demolishing. Uh, and, and that is uh, something that can be done. I don't recommend it because of the fact you take a D9 and you run over your construction area. In most cases, you're going to be grinding and braiding. That floor mop with floor tile material, and you might render all that floor tile material from a non tribal to a tribal material, which changes the whole aspect of the job. It means you've got to bring in a vacant contractor in order to do that cleanup, and uh, it's going to cost you a lot more money. So, in, in the long run, removing asbestos, whether it's non tribal or tribal from a facility, is the best course of action. Some non tribal materials should always be removed prior to demolition. That's Kind of where I, where I was going, the AC, uh, the asbestos contained siding materials do have to be removed prior to demolition. You can take a wrecking ball or a D9 or a front end loader and you run into the side of that building and you're going to be crushing, uh, uh, grinding, braiding, or a si uh, grinding or braiding uh, that uh, siding material. So in, in those situations, you don't want to get into that. And removing this asbestos material. If you have the contractor over here or this contractor up here, say they, they go out and they put a specialty on their contractor's license, asbestos. They go through the eight hours of hands-on training through one of the training providers through D4, and they train all of their employees on how to handle the material, bag it, and properly dispose of it, wet it, and such. Uh, 
to do some air monitoring since this is probably your first time thing that they've done and they get all that documentation and uh, historical data that they could go out here and they could remove that site prior to uh, demolishing that building or renovating that building because they would be qualified. If I showed up on job site, that's what I'd be looking for to see if they have that uh, SBAS specialty and see if all their employees are trained and they got some historical data on the, the air, on air sample showing that their methods are not to uh, a potential exposure to their employees. Yes, sir. This is the air monitoring history. Only good for the year that you're doing the abatement on the removal of them, and can the history go back any further? As long as you're using the, the even if the jobs like air, the jobs that we're if doing. If you now. have the same uh, percentages of asbestos, right. then you can use that as a historical data. I believe that's correct. Right? Correct. And this said you should be using the same. Using word practices on the website to collect the historical data. And also, you should be using the same word. Right, same personnel. Same person. Right. Correct. Right. If you're coming with a different group, they might be doing it a little bit differently, so that does not make that data valid as a uh, means or as a component of your historical data. Okay. Um, I'm last asbestos. There's some of the roofing materials. Uh, the silver material is hard patching on, on the, the roof, uh, the parapets. Most of your roofs, you're going to find that uh, as your penetrations or your parapet fall from your asbestos is. You do find it out in the field, sometimes it depends on the age of the building. But in most cases, you're going to find when you've got a, a flat roof, it's just around the penetration or it's just around the parapet fall. And of course, the old uh, uh, asbestos roofing material, which is Fairly damaged right there, uh, and that still has to be removed by uh, a person with at least RFS to well, get eight hours of hands on training for OSHA or to make a contract with kids. Well, yes, please. Uh, the live sheet flooring, uh, very popular back in, in the day, back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, your, your 994 house, I know everybody, yeah, if you've been around asbestos, you know 994 house. 12 to 12 foot house can have asbestos. The black mask is underneath that could have asbestos. Your baseballs uh, could have uh, asbestos on the, uh, the glue that's stuck in one ball. Carpet masking. There's a lot of materials that, that have asbestos and there's a lot of materials that still have asbestos put in them. Uh, little job not too far from here. I wasn't in uh, Georgia territory, but I was close. Asbestos site, contractor came in, he's renovating the house. And uh, he's going to put vinyl siding on it. If you've ever been a contractor and done vinyl siding, it's hard to attach that to an asbestos material on, on a wall because when you go to drill it, you're rendering it friable, but then it loosens the material and it falls down in behind your siding and it bulges your siding. So the solution is to take it off. Of course, this gentleman had not had any training uh, in that situation. So he receives some citations for this particular rack. When you're looking at, at definitions of asbestos, uh, EPA says anything greater than 1% is asbestos. Under OSHA, there's no 1% cutoff. So if you've got, if you're sending out lab results to a lab for BLM analysis and they tell you there's a trace or there's less than 1% and it doesn't say negative or non-defective, you may have asbestos there. If you have asbestos there, OSHA regulates it. It doesn't go away just because it's less than 1%. That 1% is an EPA federal regulation. That's where you use the 260s, 160s. Under OSHA, any amount of asbestos. So if you're getting these reports from these analytical places and it's telling you that uh, you've got less than 1% and they don't say negative, then you, you may have asbestos there. And you have to be precautioned by that. Now, as far as less than 1%, it's considered a uh, unclassified operation. You would need a person with a specialty on their license, like eight hours of hands-on training, uh, historical data, in order to perform this uh, this operation. If you get an opportunity, go into ocean.gov, scroll down about the middle of the page, and it, it, it'll tell you uh, determination. Click on determination, put in 1926, and then scroll down to 1101, which is the asbestos standards. And it'll pull up determinations that will spell this out, explain to you, you know, how this works and what part of the standard under the asbestos standard it would be covered under this.
threat removal, protection of the employees, and, and such. All right, going to get into the notification now, and, and I know there's some building officials here. Uh, underneath that, the owner operator of demolition or renovation activity and prior to commencement of the demolition or renovation activity has to thoroughly inspect an effective facility or part of that facility where the demolition or renovation activity will occur for the drug of fast fashion asbestos, including Category 1, Category 2, not right. Uh, and, and this is this is the EPA. If you note on here, there's not a date. So if you built a building yesterday and you're going to renovate it or demolish it today, asbestos inspection is required. Now, that's if you go to the next slide, please. Under the Virginia Code, any home built before 1985. Same information, it's just under the Code of Virginia, it says that it, it has to be built prior to 1985. And I will show you as we go through here that we still have asbestos coming into this country. We still have a lot of asbestos coming in. So the, the date is kind of a, uh, a misinterpretation of, of how we want to look at the situ situation. Because these building, uh, these building officials are the front line of a contractor. The contractor goes into a building official's office, tells them the building was built in 1987. He said there's no asbestos inspection required for building built in 1987 because it was built after 85. The contractor goes out and starts doing renovation or doing work on that building. OSHA shows up on the job for a complaint or referral. We find asbestos, you're in violation. The contractor's going to say, well, you know, Bill the Fisher gave you a permit. And that, that's true. He gave you a permit because of that regulation right there. But it doesn't mean that he told you all the information. And a lot of the information the building officials don't know. Some do, some don't. As I said, uh, where I come from, Jeff Sharper was the building commissioner in Rome City. He's very aware of this. He's actually taken my phone number and put it on his demo notifications and on his building notifications. So we try to get some more of the information out because they only regulate that 1985. And we regulate yesterday, today. You know, we regulate all the way up. So, and, and I know that's information to a, a lot of folks that are here that are building officials. That's what you go by. And we're not asking you to change your rules and regulations. What we're asking you to do is to try to put out more information. Be more than happy to lay business cards at your, your facilities. Uh, you know, print out some information that you can pass on. Uh, Ron's done a, a fact sheet for uh, for the uh, the building officials that maybe they can pass out. I don't know if any of you have gotten that. Uh, I think it went through Emory. It went through Emory Rogers. That uh, it's kind of a, a flow chart. It says this, this, and this. And, you know, in, in case of this situation, this man. When? Mary? When did they go to Emory Rogers? I, I didn't understand. When did they go to Emory Rogers? Hello, uh, it's been six months. I believe it's been several months. Several months. Yeah. Um, but we do have the facts available on our state website. Uh, WMA has it. Uh, we have the facts on our website. Uh, and we have it on the site. And we have the facts on our website. 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 While you, you folks are here, like I said, I don't regulate this area. I'd be more than happy to give you my business card. But you got George Lovelace here, who's out of the Richmond office, and Tara Hoffman, who's out of the, you know, the Norfolk office. Uh, you have on your, your, web, uh, on your business card, too. Yeah, they, they've got the, uh, uh, the website on the business card. You can go there. Uh, and there's, there's lots of the same place that you can go to, to find out this workshop. It's on our website. Yes, sir. Oh, is single family dwellings exempt for you also? No, sir. It depends on what you're going to do with the property. Well, I mean, just, just renovation or something. Renovation? You, the single family dwelling, as far as you giving them a building. Uh, They're exempt them. from us. Are they exempt from you? Right. Well, let Ron answer that, that question. Okay. The, the question was in regards to single family dwelling. Um, as Doug pointed out, single family dwelling can be exempt from the NESAP regulation. I have to keep in mind that the Department of Labor and Industry, through our GOES program, has the authority from federal OSHA to enforce the asbestos construction standard, 1926.1101. The asbestos construction standard, of course, is designed to protect the employees who may come in contact with asbestos. Work that's being done on a single family dwelling are not exempt from the OSHA or Occupational Safety Health Regulations. Perhaps some people 
people have been told that if you're working on a single family dwelling or residential structure, you're not covered under the OSHA regulation. That's not correct. Any applicable OSHA regulation to use your renovation of single family dwelling should apply. And we do inspections, not only for investors, but any safety combination on a single family dwelling. Now, with that being said, under the OSHA standard, Investors work is divided into four different classes. You have class one work, which is generally thermal system installation of surface material. You have class two work, or tile material, siding material. You have class three work, which is operations involving cleanup um, from class one and class two work, or operations where a minimal amount of investment is disturbed. And then you have class four operations, where you basically look at So with that being said, again, there are certain requirements under the OSHA standards, regardless of what type of facility, whether it's a residential or commercial building, you have to presume that thermal installation is a specific container until you have it tested. You have to assume that floor top is a specific container if the building was built prior to 1980, or the floor top was installed prior to 1980. There's also a requirement in the OSHA standard that you as a contractor, you need to thoroughly inspect that portion of the facility where you'll be working for asbestos containing materials. So in summary, even though residential facilities might be exempt under the new staff regulation, you are still required to comply with the OSHA regulation, which do have some requirements when you come in contact with asbestos containing materials. And did that answer your question? No, I think so. No. Well, I think I think the point to be made is, as far as a billing official, you know, he can remind contractors, "Hey, I don't have no authority over you for this because it's a single-family dwelling." But keep in mind that you're still under OSHA. Right. But if it's a if it's a uh, homeowner who's getting a building permit to get some renovation, the the homeowner does not fall under the OSHA requirement. That's correct, but that homeowner goes out and hires a contractor. Right, now, the contractor is, the homeowner is not. You fall in those loops and you kind of fall in that dead zone is because he didn't have to give a permit to a homeowner. Right. But, but, but that, that homeowner, homeowner, that homeowner didn't have to go out and hire a contractor. Right. Didn't have to. Right. They, they do the work themselves. And, and right. EPA does you do not go into single family dwellings that belong to a, a single person to do inspections if they're doing it themselves. I, I give you a prime example. We've got a house being renovated. It was built before 85. Yes, sir. Single family dwelling. They got a building permit to renovate. Next door neighbor raising hell because she thinks there's asbestos in this house. Good okay? And it probably is. All right? And they're throwing it in the dumpster. All right? Okay. According to her. Uh, I'm now, not an asbestos professional. So in, I don't in, in that situation, uh, they're throwing it in a dumpster. You, you can make a, a referral or a complaint to OSHA. If we go out and we find asbestos in a dumpster, then I'm going to do a referral to DQ gotcha. because of that, uh, the waste at that point going to wherever. And we don't want it showing up on the tipping floor, you know, uh, at transfer station and be you know, shipped around, shifted around by a crawler or a bulldozer or whatever. Because not only are you taking a non tribal material, you're, you're rendering a tribal that, that, that equipment. So if I go out, and, and I run into those situations a lot, I work regularly with DEQ. They'll find a site where there's an illegal dump site where somebody did renovations on their home and they've taken out here and dumped alongside the road. And I'll go out with DEQ. They've already provided the information. They know where the material came from, they know who the material belonged to. I sample the material, and the material is asbestos. Then I, I talk to the person who put it there. We get it cleaned up properly in, in those situations. So it's just, it, it, it's a chain that we have to go by. So if you have an issue in, in your county uh, or your locality and you know of a situation like that, uh, make a referral to uh, uh, the Department of Labor. They can go look at it and see what's going on. If it's indeed the homeowner doing the work, granted, he can do his own house. But that's just information we're going we're gonna to ask. And if he's put it in a dumpster, then we might have it in a dumpster. That can be a DEQ issue. 
Anybody else have another question? Okay. <coughs> with us. And uh, under the Guinea Code, this pretty much mirrors what Neshap says, except for that 85 date, as far as the uh, it respects the schools, uh, replacing the roof flooring, and siding materials may not be satisfied by somebody, you know, saying, you know, there's no asbestos there. Um, a lot of cases I'm not real comfortable with that because if they come into your facility and say, hey, you know, there's no asbestos in the roofing materials, no, no asbestos in the, the flooring materials, the, the contractor may not be licensed by the state to make that, uh, that comment. He may not have had that material sample. It might have been built after 85. And the only way you know if it's asbestos is you get sample. You got to take both sample materials and it off the left. It's the only way we know for sure. I've seen a lot of material that I thought was asbestos. It was not. And a lot of material that I thought, oh, this, this is definitely, you know, or, or, or not definitely, and, and be wrong. So you have to send it to a lab in order to uh, to know for sure whether there's asbestos material there. And, and going along with the Virginia Code continuing that uh, uh, provision of the section does not apply to a single family dwelling. Again, you're seeing the same information that you see under the knee shaft as a single family dwelling be exempt, and there's the 260, the 160, and the 35 tier. We okay? Okay. Please do it. Asbestos and factions to be renovated or demolished, they be exempt, and this is uh, section D. Uh, in this situation, you're doing a demolition of a building. You guys have uh, contractors that are doing a demolition. And uh, under your policy, you're not going to reoccupy that building. A lot of contractors will say, we're not going to reoccupy the building, so we're not going to do a clearance sample. All right, you have the abatement contractor, you have Waco come in, they remove all the asbestos from the, from the building, and it takes a week to dump them all the building. In that process of demolishing the building, maybe the electrician found that there was uh, some copper in there they wanted to get out, or some old chalkboards or something <coughs> like that. In theory, you're reoccupying that building. So, as a contractor, you didn't do a clearance criteria for that after the abatement project. Somebody could go in that building and say, you know, I was potentially exposed to asbestos, and you have no way to prove it did not. So, in this situation, I would advise, I can't recommend it, but I would advise if you're doing a demolition and you knew that another building is going to be there for maybe a few days after you finish the asbestos project, I'd run air clearance. It's very cheap insurance. You know, it, it doesn't cost a lot to have an environmental person come in, run some air samples, so you know that uh, you can reoccupy that building. The, the, the 1985 determination, uh, after reading over numerous uh, information, uh, these federal register, uh, the policy determination stated the yes is that private material, non private material that came or likely to become criminal polarized or reduced power. Powder are covered by each other. Basically, it's what this is saying is, I believe this is where Virginia got the 1985 date because of this particular document here that's in the, uh, the federal regulations. And uh, they adopted the date. That's fine. It's been going on for years. But just understand that there's, there's other state and federal regulations that are involved and not just the code of Virginia. Uh, exemptions by private land residents may be exempt from inspections and notification requirements underneath them. And this is what Ron was referring to before. Contractors who are hired to perform the work may be subject to requirements under Virginia Oath. Uh, under these circumstances, an asset survey is required to identify the presence of NCO. So, uh, going back to uh, urban, urban blight that you have in your, uh, your area. Uh, you know, a lot of the buildings you're going to take down because they're just, uh, uh, they, they look horrible. You want to get rid of them off your streets and, and you've got, you know, homeless people living in them. Uh, asbestos inspection is required under, under both before you, you take those buildings down. And in that situation, uh, like I said, if, if the, the homeowners are not available, the local governments in a lot of cases take control of those buildings. So in the the event of it all, the local government is the one who's hiring a contractor. And the contractor needs to be told that, yeah, this is a single family dwelling, but both still require you know, a, an asbestos inspection for this situation. Yes, sir. What advice do you give to? Uh, I, I don't recommend.
recommend to do that because in a lot of cases they'll tell me, well, I'll wear a respirator. And, and uh, if you've never had a medical evaluation to wear a respirator, and you have a heart condition or a lung condition, you're not aware of it, but a respirator on you do heavy lifting or, uh, or heavy work, you have a heart attack or collapse of lung. And the, as, as we check into these things, not just with homeowners but other folks, we might find that the respirator is a hazard because of the medical condition of the, the person is not aware of. So, even even a dust mask. If you if you folks uh, in your in your work provide dust masks, voluntary use of dust masks for <coughs> employees working for you, they, they have to know about the 1910 134 voluntary use of a of a face piece. It's very easy to go into. Uh, if you go to 1910 134 on the internet, uh, you can pull up appendix D and you need to provide that information to your employees about the safety of uh, respirators so they know that if they're putting this on and they have some kind of lung condition, heart condition that they're not aware of, and they haven't had a medical evaluation, the employer could have be no responsible for providing that uh, respirator uh, protection to I got a little off base there, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead, Beth. I'm sorry. Um, places where you can find that uh, fire doors, uh, elevator equipment panels, uh, wall doors, base flashing, roof belting. Anybody in here in SMS is inspector, the inspector for the state, gentleman back here. Uh, and I know Waco has uh, Mike. Do you do inspections also? No, I don't do inspections. Just, just get supervisor's license or Mike's yes. on? Yes. Supervisor's <laughs> license. There, there's a lot of places you can find asbestos uh, still in buildings. Uh, and it's not going away anytime soon. That's, that's the situation we're going into. Uh, fire blankets, lab hoods, uh, ceiling tiles, laying ceiling tiles like this, depending on the year that you're putting You got your, uh, your, your duct, your seam duct, the, the white seam duct, the seam, if you drop the full ceiling out, you're less likely to find some of that duct stuff. Uh, they claw, they're using like a, uh, a vinyl now in the flex joint. Uh, when the air conditioner is cut on, they always bump. And they put the flex points in here, and the old ones used to have a lot of asbestos in them. The, uh, the wall board, the sheet rock, uh, the, that popcorn ceiling there on the bottom is hard to see. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a spray on material that's uh, been put in, it's got asbestos in it. Fire doors. We have uh, fire doors in schools, in uh, government buildings and such, and they can have asbestos, especially if they're older buildings, have asbestos in the fire doors. Uh, going back to the laying of acoustical ceiling and uh, then the mastic pipes, we call them hockey pipes. They're the brown mastic pieces that uh, hold those ceiling tiles up. Some of them are on a grid, but some of them have a concrete uh, floor or ceiling above there, and the mastic holds them on there, and those a lot of times will have asbestos in them. Uh, the cemented pipes, the sewer lines, all the pipes underneath the ground, uh, the asbestos, asbestos uh, lab hoods. The old ducts out of, out of schools, old laboratories in schools. The brown caulking and pipe penetrations where they used to go through the concrete walls. Now, these, this probably you won't find too much unless you're in an open building. Uh, the glazing uh, on the, uh, uh, the, the glass, you will find asbestos. I'm losing you. Uh, you'll find uh, asbestos in this, and you will also find uh, lead, lead in this. Uh, and that's the uh, caulking. Uh, and glazing on the time. Uh, loose fill asbestos insulation, your vermiculites and your asbestos materials and your old blow ins. Uh, I used to live in Memphis years ago and used to do the vermiculite, used to blow in ceilings. Okay. Uh, the lab, when you're getting the lab results, and, and some of you folks may see lab results, some of you may not, uh, asbestos uh, greater than 1% is a positive. Uh, less than 1% is a, a non-asbestos containing material. It's still an asbestos material, but not an asbestos containing material. And what you want to see when you see a lab report is if you're not looking for asbestos, it's in the uh, not detected or negative. And, and a lot, I deal with a, a couple of labs, and they'll say uh, less than none detected uh, on, on lab report. Uh, to ensure that the building owner or the demolition contractor has actually evaluated, accurately evaluated the site for the present asbestos, you must notify prior to the onset of any demolition. Uh, demolition notifications, I don't know if you folks are aware. Uh, you're going to demolish a building uh, for commercial purposes.
purposes for uh, that single family that's going to be used for commercial purposes or if it's a commercial building 10 days prior to demolition, whether there's asbestos there or not. You have to do an application to the state. It goes into Jamaica and, and Ms. Anderson thing up front here. Uh, and it also gets hard copy to the EPA. Owner operator. Uh, it means any person that owns, leases, controls, operates, or supervises the facility being demolished or renovated, uh, or renovated, or any person that owns, leases, operates, controls, and supervises the demolition, renovation, operation, or both. So, in that situation, if you don't have one, you have the other that may be in, uh, at fault in these situations. You have an owner, you may have an owner, you may have a contractor. That's uh, both to be cited for the same situation. Uh, in, in uh, owner operator is required to provide the updated information. These are the notifications that Gloria gets. Uh, anytime the amount of asbestos affected uh, is changed by uh, the lease is, is 20%. Uh, when the start date changes, when the time changes, anytime that you got a notification and you have a baby contractor sitting around here, anytime you have a baby contractor and they're doing a project, they have to set dates on when they're supposed to be on site and time. In amounts of material that they're going to be removing. If any of that is altered or changed in the process of this, they need to send an amended notification. It, it, it's not a big fee. The total amount of fee for asbestos for the contractors is, is not very expensive. It's, it's I think $470 for a large, large project. An amended fee is only $15. So it's not a lot of money for uh, doing asbestos removal as long as we have the appropriate contractors. Uh, license people on site. Uh, prior to the demolition, we move all regulated asbestos materials uh, being demolished. Uh, that we begin to break up and discard or similarly disturb material or include access to material place by removal. Um, this is saying that uh, we remove. Can you that one, please? Uh, prior to demolition, you have to remove all the regulated asbestos material. Uh, before you demolish a facility or a facility. If a facility is being demolished by intentional burns, I'm sorry you give me all that as a break for the rest of it. I apologize, I get to call uh, If you're intentionally burning a building, a lot of the fire departments will do intentional burning. They'll do fire training. Uh, and they stopped doing that in a lot of localities. A lot of the uh, uh, the volunteer fire department still they don't really realize how much is involved in doing uh, uh, a fire training situation. By the time DEQ uh, finishes telling them what they need to remove and they're removing all the asbestos, they end up with basically uh, study models and, and not much of a building there to do fire training. On. So a lot of the, uh, even the volunteer fire departments have gotten away from that. But uh, uh, fire, uh, demolishing by fire is a, a notifiable situation for 10 days prior to, to burning the building after we move all the asbestos prior to that and you got to do the notification to the state and to the EPS. Abandoned buildings utilized for fire training. Uh, <coughs> for buildings which are structurally sound, uh, if you have a fire on a building in uh, down, downtown New, uh, Newport News, downtown New York, and they're still part of the building, still there. Asbestos inspections required as long as it's safe to go into the facility and, and sample the If we find the building is not safe to go into, and the building officials are the one to make that determination, they say, well, it's unsafe, you can't go in here. We, we see, or an inspector, an asbestos inspector, sees asbestos material, uh, suspect asbestos material, floor material, wall board material, uh, ceiling tile material, then we can present this asbestos then uh, the rest of the building has to be taken down, as with this, uh, with a 10 day notification, as being asbestos and hand material. Yes, sir. Oh, I thought you had a question. I'm sorry. Anybody have a question on the here? Okay. Uh, category 1 ACM should be examined for friability and condition. And uh, friable material, category 1 material, that is friable and poor condition must be removed prior to any further activity. So if you have a, and, and we're relatively flexible on a lot of these situations. You've got uh, a partially burned building. You're able to go into part of the building and you find there's some asbestos materials there. 
but the building is basically unsafe to, to occupy or have people in. Uh, a lot of times, uh, Mr. Graham can give them a, a waiver on the uh, uh, on the notification. I mean, he still requires them to do a notification for this, but he might allow them to wet it, have an environmental person there, a supervisor on site, uh, be running air samples, perimeter air samples in bulk loads and material as long as it's going to the proper landfill. But it's something that has to be, in most cases, evaluated by one of the asbestos inspectors, the inspectors or the environmental companies, and then they would be contacting Mr. Graham for his okay on doing certain situations. How can you tell if there's asbestos uh, in materials? Uh, the only way to know for sure is to bulk sample the DLM analysis, uh, cold light microscopy, TEM, and transmission electron microscopy. Those are the, the only ways that you'll know if there's asbestos in any building materials. You have to, have to sample. All asbestos containing materials have health risk now. Uh, unless the material is becoming primal, airborne, in most cases, you're not going to inhale it uh, or ingest it. Uh, as long as it stays in, in, a, in a good condition, you're not saying grinding or breaking that material. In most cases, you're not going to be uh, uh, subject to any kind of potential exposure. Depends on the situation. Do all people who are exposed to asbestos develop asbestos related diseases? No. Uh, I can tell you for a fact I, I was in the Navy. I've been on FS since I was 18. The latency period is 20 to 40 years. I get a physical every year, and so far I'm I'm good to go. I mean, I can show up tomorrow and have asbestosis, you know, and grow on my uh, my lungs. But at this point, you know, there, there's nothing there. So it depends on the person. It depends on the situation. If you're a smoker, you're increasing your opportunities like by 95 percent. I think that's one of those questions that uh, that comes out when you're doing the asbestos training. Uh, because it, it weakens your immune uh, system and uh, your, uh, your opportunities for inhaling those fibers that may be there. Okay. Uh, should all asbestos be removed? Uh, no. If asbestos materials are in good shape and not like some of the photographs that I showed you, then asbestos can be left in place and managed. But most dental industry uh, owners have asbestos in their buildings that get labeled that get marked it's in really good shape. It's not damaged. They've given all their employees uh, awareness training so they know if something falls in the floor because of a rainstorm. They're not uh, they're not going to sweep it up. They've got an abatement contract or maybe on a retainer. So if something does happen, they can call those folks. Their their employees working at the site put some caution tape around it, keep people away from it. And the maybe contractor comes in and he gets it. the materials cleaned up. They usually have an environmental company run some air samples so that the employees feel comfortable in the area where they've had a certain spill or a certain situation. Can anybody work with asbestos? Jill told you all earlier, as far as D4, you have to be licensed by the Commonwealth. You have to, as a worker or as an asbestos supervisor, project monitor, manager, of, uh, project monitor, excuse me, asbestos treatment, asbestos inspector. There's a lot of licensure that's uh, related to asbestos or training, and you have to be one of those folks. Contractors, as I said before, we go to her presentation, asbestos contractors have a 3306 beginning to their, their license. Uh, and as most contractors have, like the 2701 or 2705. Uh, not only in, in Waco, that's Joe Crockett standing in the back here with Waco. Not only does he have a 3306 contractor, asbestos removal contractor license, he also got probably a 2701 or a 2705 general contractor's licensure so that he does other work as in, other than just as factors. Contract uh, to general relief it is still legal in the United States to import, process, manufacture, and use that as a product, product for certain limited use. Still use it. In the early 70s, federal government had uh, attempted to did make success to ban different applications in the use of that stuff. In 2007, Senator Patty Murray from Washington State and Representative Betty McCollum from Minnesota introduced a companion bill in the Senate House to amend the TOSCA and uh, to amend TOSCA and to ban all products and the uses of asbestos in America. The House version still sits on the floor in the Senate. In 2008, 
2007, so several versions have been reintroduced in the Senate, in the Senate and the House, excuse me, but no bill has been passed to date. Currently, uh, the dams are in fact uh, under the Clean Air Clean Air Act. The spray on applications of material containing more than one percent asbestos in buildings, structures, pipes, uh, and conduits, unless the material is encapsulated. Uh, with, with a binder during spraying that material will not fry one after drying. Situation you run into this is EPA is still saying you can spray this material. But somewhere down the road somebody's gonna have to take it off or remove it. And in that situation somebody has to take it off or remove it, and you get into, you know, have somebody done an inspection. Well this material was after 85, you know, so it probably doesn't pay us back. You get into a lot of situations, you know, with that that uh, you may have folks taking asbestos off that are not qualified to do that or, or trained to do that. Toxic being the, uh, the Toxic Substance Control Act. Corrugated papers, roll boards, commercial papers, specialized papers, roll, roll belts, and new uses of asbestos are still banned. And, and Jill had mentioned that in the presentation in detail. Asbestos is present in many buildings across the country, still in use in some building materials. For example, 1984. Uh, EPA did a study and showed the average 20% of all buildings in the United States contain asbestos. This is, you know, that's been 26 years ago. That's been a number of years. Uh, 1988 building surveys found that all, that overall 68% 68, 68 of buildings in New York City contain asbestos. And that was uh, done before the uh, uh, 911. Filing products, even when purchased new, may still contain asbestos. Asbestos cement, corrugated sheets, flat sheets, clothing, pipeline, roof belts, floor tile, which they no longer make a 9 9 12 foam. Uh, asbestos uh, cement chamber, millboard, asbestos cement pipes, automatic transmissions, uh, flooring, clutching, uh, friction material, disc brakes, drum brakes. EPA does not track the manufacturing or processing or distribution of conflicts uh, of asbestos containing products. Possible sources of information would include inquiring the dealer, suspect, the MSD, as you mentioned before. You get a material that you're not sure of, uh, you're getting ready to renovate this building here, you're going to take all the floor tile out, and uh, uh, you find out this is asbestos material, so you bring a contract in, you do all that. You don't check the MSD, the contractor you're buying your floor tile from, you give you something he bought from Mexico, China, uh, Russia, South Africa, and it's got asbestos in it. You may be putting asbestos right back in the building. <laughs> Domestic production and use of asbestos has not been mined in the U.S. since 2002. And the United States is depending on, on imports to meet manufacturing needs. Asbestos consumption in the U.S. is estimated to be 715 tons in 2009. That's last year. Gripping products are estimated to count for 65% of the U.S. consumption and other applications. Uh, Canada, 89%, others, 11%. They, they make asbestos in China, in Canada, uh, in Russia, in, in Brazil, in South Africa. There's a lot of places <coughs> where asbestos still has open mines, and we buy products. There, there was a case where a contractor working in um, uh, Texas going to build a house for a gentleman. Uh, excuse me, going to build a, a, a rebuild a building for a gentleman. Um, he had a basic contract come in with go all the asbestos. He bought his sheet rock out of Mexico. All the uh, uh, sheet rock contained that asbestos, not in the joint compound, but in the, the sheet rock itself, and put it right back in the building. And for some reason, he decided to check it before he finished. So it does still happen. That's all I've got. And I know I've talked a lot, but I didn't let you guys get out of here. Uh, anybody have any questions? I know there's the no whole we got questions. Yes, sir. Can you talk about the water with the particle burn, for example? Yes, sir. Say the same good clarification. We get clarity on the same.